Hi, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about something I alluded to previously, which is the handling of events, specifically mouse and keyboard events, in uh, Flashpoint Secure Player's web browser. Um, so there's actually three different places where they're kind of handled, uh, and the first one is this very specific use case. It's the low-level hook that I talked about last time. Um, and specifically, this is for the toolbar. This is to detect if your mouse has gone to the top of the screen, um, and if it has, then display the toolbar. Now, why am I doing this in a low-level hook instead of like a pre-filter message, or even just the regular mouse move event? Well, the reason that I'm doing it in a low-level hook is because plugins can steal window focus. And so, uh, particularly with the Viscape plugin, uh, which tends to be taking up the entire page anyway, um, it will steal the mouse focus, and so my window will not receive the mouse move event because it will be going to that window. And that means that I can't know that the mouse has moved to the top of the screen. So low-level hooks allow you to see window messages even if um, another window is ultimately going to receive them, it allows you to see them system-wide. And so I can actually demo this, right? If I start the browser up and go full screen, and then I open up the print dialog, if I move my mouse to the top of the screen, it'll still show the toolbar, even though it is not even though this is not the window that's focused, it's the print dialog. Uh, and yes, I'll explain why the print dialog is allowed to open over the full screen uh, background eventually, uh, just uh, not right now. But you can see that even though the full screen window is not focused, the toolbar still shows up. I can't in actually interact with it because the print dialog is a dialog and it prevents me from touching that window. But assuming it was like a plugin window that was just stealing window focus, uh, I would still be able to interact with this. And so um, that's the reason why I use a low level hook here. This is not really normally what you, you would do because normally you would only care about messages on the current window. But in this particular case, it's important that I receive them anyway. Um, now, when it comes to a low-level hook, at the end, you're actually meant to call this uh, call next hook x function, uh, which passes this along to the next um, low-level hook if anybody else has created one. And so <clears throat> you want to make sure that you do actually call this function, uh, because if you don't reach it, then you're going to be blocking on mouse move. That's going to make mouse movement really slow and laggy and terrible. Uh, and you also want to make sure that you're not doing anything too, uh, you know, processor intensive in here, because, you know, the, again, that's going to make the mouse movement bad. And so, <clears throat> right away, I have this entire function in a, a try catch, because if any exception occurs, I still want to make sure that the mouse is going to move at the end of it. Um, right? I don't want to get in the way of the window messages sort of flow. Then. Um, I check that the code passed in is greater than or equal to zero. This is just because the documentation says to do that, and if that if it isn't, you shouldn't do anything. So I just check that. Then I check that uh, the event is actually a mouse move, right? Um, and then I check that we're in full screen. Now this um, should never this code shouldn't be running if we're not in full screen because I turned the low level hook off. I turn the hook off when we exit full screen. Uh, but maybe there's some like race condition where, you know, because it's a mouse move, it's happening all the time. Maybe it could be in the middle of exiting full screen uh, and, you know, receive a mouse move event, right? Entirely possible. So I double check here just in case, right? And then <coughs> is the actual work. Now, interesting to note here, um, we actually get the X and Y position of mouse in this L param parameter, uh, and I could use that to determine if the mouse is at the top of the screen, uh, but I don't. Be instead, I use this mouse position variable, 
uh, that comes from C-sharp. And the reason why is simply because I'm going to be using the C-sharp point-to-client function, and it expects a point, and um, mouse position is just, you know, available. It's just there, and it's already a point. If I wanted to use the value from lparam, I would have to convert it uh, from you know, the X and Y sort of integer native value into a C-sharp point, and there's just, a, you know, no pun intended, no point in doing that. Uh, so <clears throat> we might as well just use the one, the C-sharp value that's available to us, so we just do. So we use mouse position, we pass that to point to client, this gets the mouse position relative to the toolbar, uh, and we save that in a variable. Now, um, we check. If the toolbar is already visible, well then we're just making sure the mouse is still over it, so we check that the client rectangle of the toolbar uh, still contains um, the mouse position. If it doesn't, then we set it back to invisible. Otherwise, uh, the mouse must be specifically at the very top of the screen, so we check that the Y value is zero, and then if it's within the toolbar, then we um, set the toolbar to be visible. And that's it. Uh, that's all this does. Um, so, yeah, you know, not a ton of, of work, right? Uh, this is, I think, reasonable to have in uh, the low-level uh, hook itself. So that's the first place where messages are handled, and this it's only just this one specific message of mouse movements that we handle this way. Um, but the rest we handle in other places. So if you look, there's actually a pre-filter message down here. And we handle some more things here. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to, I'll come back to this, but a good example of something that we handle is um, clicking the back and forward mouse buttons. By default, for whatever reason, I'm not actually sure why, um, the web browser control uh, does not handle uh, the back and forward mouse buttons, so we have to set that up ourselves. And <clears throat> it also, if we just use the regular click event on the web browser control, then it will um, it, it will not work. And I assume that's because you're clicking on something on the page, which is, which is consuming the event before it is handed to us. And so in order to handle the back and forward mouse buttons, you have to uh, use pre-filter message. And actually, I got this code snippet just off of Stack Overflow because other people were having, were having the same issue. And this is the only thing that seems to actually work. So, you know, again, we just um, check that, that this is the message for, you know, you press the back or forward button. We uh, check if it's the back button. If so, we call the on back event. Otherwise, we call the on forward event. Um, the other thing that we handle here is <clears throat> this is where we handle um, the full screen label disappearing early. I mentioned in a previous video that if you interact with the page at all, uh, that the full screen, uh, the press F11 to exit full screen label will disappear. This is where we make that happen. Um, so any sort of key press or left, right, or middle mouse button uh, click, that will cause that to disappear. And again, we have to do that here for the same reason that all these events are just swallowed by the web browser control before we can process them. And so we have to process them here in pre-filter message. Um, now, the difference between this and, and the low-level hook is that it's only on the current window, right? Unlike the low-level hook, um, you know, we don't want the user to press the back button of the mouse in a pop-up, and then every window navigates back, right? We only want the focused window to navigate back. We only want the currently active window to care about the back and forward mouse buttons. Now, this does mean that if a plugin such as Viscape, for example, has focus, it can uh, silence the back and forward mouse buttons, but uh, that's just kind of, you know, tough luck you know, we kind of have to just deal with that because um, there's just, uh, we just don't want to catch it all the time, uh, regardless of what window it's on. We need to make sure it's for the currently focused 
browser window. So um, that's why we have pre-filter message separate. And then uh, we also have yet another place uh, where events happen, and that is in process command key. Um, this specifically is for hotkeys, and you might think, well, why isn't this in pre-filter message, right? Like, why not handle this? You're already handling keystrokes there. Uh, the answer is because um, it, it's actually for the same reason that this code comment explains. Um, we don't want to handle these hotkeys all the time, because one of the hotkeys, for example, is pressing the backspace key to navigate back a page. Uh, all browsers have this. If you try this in Internet Explorer or, or, your, or your Chrome or Firefox, you press backspace, it will navigate uh, back a page. But the issue is that if you're editing like a text box on the page, then backspace shouldn't go back a page, it should edit the text in the text box and, and backspace the text. Uh, and so the point of process command key of this particular function uh, is that it will receive the event only if it has not already been consumed by something on the web page itself. Uh, and so we can, this is like intended to be used for hotkeys and stuff. This is different from pre-filter message, which will always receive the event. This will only get it if we uh, want to actually be handling for, for a hotkey. If it's already done something, then we will not get this event. Um, so you can see here I define all these browser hotkeys. Uh, the web browser control actually handles uh, a lot of these by default, but there's no point in uh, there's no problem you know being explicit about them. So uh, best to be explicit about these keys. And this is also where we define um, F11 or Alt plus Enter to enter full screen. Um, <clears throat> funny thing about this, uh, there was, when I first introduced this to add hotkeys, there was a bug for a while where um, the Atmosphere browser plugin in Flashpoint uh, would not receive arrow key presses. Like if you press the arrow keys to move around, it wouldn't. Uh, work in the Atmosphere plugin. And so SGO went in and looked around and tried to figure out uh, how to fix this, and he uh, ended up using the preview key down event to, um, to override it so that it would work. I looked at his pull request, I tested it, it worked, the arrow keys worked, and I could move around in Atmosphere, and so I determined that it fixed the problem, and I approved that pull request. And I didn't realize that by using Preview Key Down, that actually overrode Process Command Key, so this function didn't happen anymore. Um, and it actually broke all the hotkeys, so they didn't work anymore, and I just didn't notice. For the, lo for the longest time, I just didn't know that this was a bug. Um, <clears throat> So, yeah, it fixed Atmosphere, and none of the hotkeys work anymore. Um, but uh, the eventually I discovered the actual solution, and the actual solution was just me being dumb. I forgot to call the base. What you're supposed to do uh, after process command key is you're supposed to pass it along to the next control, uh, and so you're supposed to return base.processCommandKey, uh, and I just forgot to do that, and so that's why the arrow keys were not being relayed to the Atmosphere plugin, unfortunately. Uh, but now I fixed it. So, for future reference, do not use Preview Key Down. Uh, like, if you're making um, a browser app, uh, there's very little value in using Preview Key Down at all, to be honest. Uh, you are much better off uh, with uh, this particular combo of pre-filter message and process command key and don't really bother with anything else. The low-level hook is just a special case, it's a special scenario where I wanted to be able to detect mouse moves system-wide, but that usually isn't a thing. Um, but in this particular case, you know, I, I wanted it to be. Um, so yeah, so those are the different ways that uh, Flashpoint Secure Player handles events. It's in three different places for very good and specific reasons. Uh, it's not just because I didn't know what I was doing and didn't know that they could be consolidated. Uh, there was 
actual thought put behind uh, putting these events specifically here. Um, anyway, next time I'm going to cover um, the full screen mode, uh, specifically uh, how it handles other windows opening over top of it, uh, and stuff like dialogues and whatnot, and, and how it handles that. So I'll see you in the next video.